the JAMA Network. My name is Ann Partridge, and I'm a medical oncologist focusing on breast cancer at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. We studied the topic of BRCA1 and 2 testing in young women with breast cancer in light of the fact that this is one of the major issues facing young women when they're diagnosed with breast cancer, and it can have profound impact on how they are cared for as well as their future risks. In 2006, we set up and started a prospective cohort study for young women with breast cancer. And in this study, we're trying to elucidate the unique issues facing young women. And we're studying many things, including the biology of the disease, all the way to their quality of life and survivorship. For this particular analysis, we decided to look at genetic testing in the cohort. And the study enrolls women age 40 and younger from multiple participating sites who are identified through pathology record review for the most part. And so we try to get an unbiased sample of women at participating sites, and we approach them and invite them to be part of this prospective cohort study. By 2013, we had about 900 patients on the study, and we decided to look at who was getting genetic testing, what were the barriers to testing, and how were these things changing over time, and importantly, how was testing influencing treatment decisions in the cohort. The results of our analysis were actually a little bit surprising to us when we looked and saw over time that while in 2006, the women enrolled in the cohort had about a 77% rate of being tested, by 2012 and 13, those rates were in the 95 to 97% range. Other important results we found were that a substantial minority were not being tested. And we looked at the barriers to testing, and one of the things we found was that within that group, a large proportion actually said that their doctors and providers had never brought up testing as an issue and they had never been sent for counseling. And so this is one, I think, area that's low-hanging fruit. All young women, as recommended by evidence-based guidelines, should be at least introduced to the idea of genetic counseling and genetic testing, told about these issues, and offered the opportunity. We also found that for those women who did get tested, there were a substantial proportion, nearly 30%, who told us that genetic testing or concerns about genetic influence had influenced their treatment decisions. For the most part, the treatment decisions were influenced by this information from a local therapy's perspective, as in women chose to either do more or less surgery with or without radiation. At this point in time, genetic information, BRCA1 and 2 testing and results, do not appear to be impacting, at least in our cohort, decisions about chemotherapy or decisions about hormonal therapy. I think our study hits home that more and more women are being tested, uh, guideline-appropriate testing for BRCA1 and 2 when diagnosed with breast cancer at a young age, and that we need to make sure, given how much it's impacting on treatment decisions, we need to make sure that we are supporting these women in their testing with good information to surround that and good support to help them make the best decisions possible for them. And then for the women who aren't being tested, even though it's a minority, we need to make sure that we are helping to remove the barriers, at a minimum speaking to these women about the issue of BRCA1 and 2 testing and potentially other genes as they come along and, are, and that we're able to test for, and making sure that we get them the right resources and supports to be able to access this information if possible.